Over 2,000 rentals are available in Toronto right now. Over 2,000. What is it going to do to the the market and how is that affecting investors? Okay, my friends, Jesse Kaplan here, Toronto Risa Asian Mortgage Broker, Research with Research Mortgage. And today we're going to talk about all these rentals available in Toronto and what to do from an investor perspective and also from a rental perspective. Okay, I'm going to torontocondosforsale.com. Follow with me here. I'm going to write, no introduction today, right to the point. Go to the menu, go to the listings, go to residential search. Okay, let's put Toronto. Here we go. Property time. I'm just going to look for condos. There's also houses and everything. I'm going to untick the sale and look at the rent and hit search. And look at this is live, by the way. Okay, and if you look at the number here, 3833, 3,833 properties found in the boundaries of Toronto. This is just Toronto alone. As I zoom in, this number will match itself to the map. So if I cut out of North York, I get about 2,000 properties just in the old Toronto, okay? This is this is insane. So, of course, as you come closer to downtown, there's more density, means more units per square kilometer, more high buildings, there's lots and lots of small units, and they make the bulk of the rental units. Now, you know, in Toronto, we haven't had any designated, purposely built rental apartment buildings uh, built since the 70s or the 80s. That means that we don't really have rental buildings. We have a few now. The last few years, there's a few condos that turn into uh, rentals, but really not that many. Most of it is condo buildings, and most of it were sold to individual investors um, who now are renting their units in the open market. And look at this. When you go to torontocondos.com, uh, Toronto you get a little arrow here. It actually tells you how much this property... This property was discounted by $100. This property is on the same price. Uh, those discounted, uh, this one we looked at, this one was discounted by $50. Okay, so this is from the listing. And as you scroll around, you'll see a lot of stuff, $125 less, this is the same still, the same. If it was relisted, uh, you won't see it. Only if the price was changed for the same listings, you'll see the change. This one was discounted by $100. This one, this one by $150. This one by $150. So it was, uh, it was $2250 and now it's $2100. And it still sits at the market uh, 15 days later. Mind you, this one is 22 days in the market for this listing. It might have been relisted before 150, so that was at uh, 2200. Okay, so you can see. And I'm just randomly clicking here to show you what I mean. 50 bucks. That's a bit of a cheaper area as you move east. 150 less for the 600 square foot unit. 26 days on the market, 100 bucks less, on and on. Now, the fact that they, these are asking prices, okay? So this person here reduced the listings from 23, from 2450, say, to 2300, uh, reduced it by $150, and it's been on the market for 22 days for this listing only. Uh, this unit might have been listed before, and we, have, we can't even see it. <clears throat> so it doesn't mean he was, but understand that, that that exists. 23 days on the market, 20 days on the market. There are so many properties on the market. So if you want to look at properties, and I'm going to talk from a renter perspective first, I'm going to move to the investor's perspective first. That's a locker. Let's ignore it. Uh, 101 Peter, <clears throat> reduced by 75 bucks. 51 days on the market. That, that's, a, that's a seller that does not like to reduce. This one reduced by 55. This one reduced by 50. It doesn't matter. It doesn't help them. 20 days on market. This one doesn't say. 51 days on market. That's nearly two months. There's Bisha reduced by 150, so that was a 2100 reduced. That's pretty good actually. Uh, probably a studio. Okay, so what's going on? First of all, if you're a tenant, reduced by $550. What? I want to see this. Uh, 25 telegram use, unit 610. What is this? One bed, one bath. Okay, you'll agree with me that asking 2500, it's it's a bit much. Maybe it was furnished. I'm not sure. But it's just a regular unit. But imagine this unit. Okay, it's about say 600 square feet. I see here, just a normal unit, not much of view. 1950 for this unit. So the price is becoming reasonable again. And why is it happening? Well, it's happening because there's so many condos buildings. They came on the market, <clears throat> and because the price here's more 115, 56 days on the market still sits there. Okay, it's endless. Uh, so you can see what's going on and obviously as you move away from the center you may find better deals that's one room i think it's probably just one room yeah one bedroom available in a two bedroom 1400 so 
either the owner lives there or the renter uh, renting the other room, 1400 that still gives you 2800 uh, for a two-bedroom. That's still expensive in my opinion. <laughs> but, but, but you can see what I mean. It's, it's, the prices are coming down. Price of rentals are coming down. You need to stay in the market a little longer maybe. 7,000 here, it's probably a large, that's a large unit. Okay, so what's happening? There's so many units on the market. You know, right now I'm looking like not even to Bloor and there's 1,734 units available for rent in this area alone. As I move through the map, this number will change. You see here fetching results. This is actually amazing. 1994, so 2,000 properties just up to DuPont. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit. That's a lot. And now we get 2,300 properties available. So you can see there's a lot of rentals on the market. Now, if you want to see it, this is the Toronto Condos uh, for sale.com. Fantastic site I put together for you last year uh, with the help of a technology company. You can look the same. This is the same from condos.ca. So it's the, sa the same information, just a slightly different interface. This is just a generic condos.ca. And you can see here, you can sort by building by building. So one blower here has. 13 for sale and 21 units for rent. Lots of units for rent. Okay, it doesn't show me if the price went down. Uh, there's 87 Peter, just uh, King and University there, King and Peter, 17 for rent. 629 just across from me, 16 for rent. That's the Thompson, the second Thompson. Now, when's the last time you saw a unit in Thompson, even a small unit, for rent for $2,000? Well, there's one. 2100, 2100, 2100. There's a lot of them. So. You know, if, you, if you're a renter, you're looking to rent, I think, I think you're, in good. you're in good right now because you have the opportunity to get a unit for less. If you logged in and say list in 24 days, they got 2300, unit 707 got 20, terminated, terminated, so they didn't lease, they didn't lease, they didn't lease, they didn't lease. So a lot of these units are sitting on the market. Now, terminated doesn't mean it's sitting vacant. It means maybe they just closed that listing called terminated in our language, and then they simply... Um, relisted it for another price. Uh, Least in 77 days. That took 77 days for the studio to get 2200. So that owner, you know, 77 days, but probably they don't move on the 78th day. They probably move the soonest, it'll be say 90 days. So three months, they shouldn't have been sitting on the market, possibly vacant, uh, losing 2200 times three. Now, think about it. Let's say, let's say your average rent is uh, 2400 and it sits on the market. So if you lose one month, one twelfth of the year, you could just lower, you lost 2400 for the year, you could just lower your price by 200, 2400 divided by 12, and that would give you um, the average amount that you could have gotten, assuming you could have rented it for that time. The unit was sitting on the market for two months, 4800 you lost 400 a month, so you should lease it for 2000 and that's how it works. Now, obviously, the investors... Don't always, don't always use this kind of logic, but they're going to have to. There's 31 units available at Aura. 31 units. So I'm zooming in by. Okay. Um, so do you, do you want to live at Aura? You know, no problem. I mean, there's, lot, there's lots of options. And if you have a rental agent, now I, I do some rentals usually around me for the more expensive units, but I have rental agents. If you're looking for one bedroom or a bachelor or two, like a regular two bedroom, I'll send someone from the office with you, not a problem. And you can see what happens. Okay, uh, what else I got open here? Uh, this is epic. So that's Queen West. It's like a generic, simple building. It's, okay, 11 units for rent. That's not a lot for epic, actually. So that's pretty good. But you see, there's a lot of stuff. This is a room. Okay, just one room. Uh, but here, 1899, 1980. So there's two units under 2,000. This one, you can probably get it for 2,000. Okay, so you, you can negotiate these days. You can negotiate for units, and you have a lot of choice. I want to show you one more thing that's going to blow your mind here. Uh, 488 University, which I love this building. I think it's a phenomenal investment. But look right now, there's 54 units for rent in this building. 54. So if you wanted to live at uh, 488 University, I think this is a great time. You know, basically get your agent, get your OC to call around these 54 people, 54 owners, and say, what is the best price I can get for this unit? Let's negotiate for this unit and let's get the best price we can unless you want to just keep sitting there. So this unit been on the market for 94 days. So they lost a potential $7,500 and of course 10000 because by the time he's going to rent, it's going to be February 1st or March 1st, so four months on the market, 2500 Why don't you just reduce your, your price? A lot of people have a hard time understanding this because they were sold on, on the premise that the rent pays the cost. Now, so you go to the condo calculator, 
Go to the condocalculator.ca. It puts your name, your email. I'm not a robot, and it's going to give you the listing. And then it's going to send you an email to this file here. And you download this file, and you can play with the numbers. And I've shown you, I'm not going to do all the numbers today. But let's say, I'll, I'll do a quick one. Let's say you have a one bedroom, 600 square feet. And let's say you pay 600000 for it, 1000 bucks a foot, and you put your 20% down, your carrying cost estimated. Okay, this is a bit high for condo fees. Should be about 400 bucks. That's okay. Uh, your taxes should be about 250. Just gonna increase that number just to get kind of reasonable amount. That's more or less there. Okay, and the mortgage calculator for you. This unit costs you 2,900 a month, 2,800, whatever. Now, for this one 600 square feet uh, condo, you know you're gonna get these days about 2,100, maybe a bit more if you buy on a subway. If you're on Queen West, maybe 2100, 22, let's say 2200 you got for it, okay? Reasonable price. You're still losing $700 a month. You're in the red, 8500 a month. Now, you know, as an investor, and I said I'm going to talk about the renter's perspective first and the investor. An investor doesn't really care necessarily if it's a cash flow unit, that type of investor, because the investor could say, well, look, I'm buying this for a long term, and I'm, I'm buying this for investment, I'm buying this to give it to my kids. This one is going to be in my family for the next 20 years. It's going to appreciate, it's going to double in value in the next 7, 8, 10 years. So even if I lost, quote unquote, lost 8500 I have to top up $700 a month. It's still not a big deal, even if I topped 8000 a year, because out of, you know, at just a percent and a quarter of the value of the unit. So it's kind of like I just paid 608000 for it. Um, I'm just going to throw another 8000 in and I'm going to break even. So investor may not care so much, but investor are buying for cash flow, they're going to start having a problem because they can't break even. So what to do? Well, in the, in, the, in the short term, what you have to do in order for cash flow, you only have two options. One is to top up your rent. So now I'm talking for investors, okay? So if you're an investor, and let's say you're at Casa 3, so a building that sold a lot of investors here, tons and tons of investors, and you can see how many units for rent, okay? So none of the people that are renting these units obviously live in these units. They have another home. They've got to be somewhere, okay? So all these people here or all the 50... How many we said? 54 people that own at 488 University and trying to get a tenant. Don't forget, they bought the unit at a much lower price than today's price. So I can tell you that the carrying cost on, on, on one of these units here is about probably 1800 a month. So if they reduce the price to 1800 a month, they can still break even on the small units here. Okay, this is the Collins Avenue. I can tell you because I just sold one of these. The average carrying cost for these units is about 1800 1900 a month. So even if they drop the price to eighteen hundred, they they still break it even. That's okay, and if they if they not break even a hundred dollar, two hundred dollar, three hundred dollar, is not a big deal because considering what you bought, and considering the appreciation we anticipate on a building of this such quality and caliber, and on the subway, and the pool upstairs, and all these things, this building probably worth a lot more. I still expect this unit to double in price within the next seven, eight, or ten years, maybe even less. But in the short term, you have a bit of a problem. Now, this is not so much of a problem because it's a quality building. So you nearly guaranteed the best investment possible and the best valuation possible, the best increase. But what happens if you know you run these numbers and you're really big in the hole because you bought it some some out of nowhere? Okay. So the first thing you need to do, dear investors, and I'm going back to uh, TorontoCosmosSale.com here. This is my site, and any property that you want to know about. Um, just click here, put your name, your phone. Okay, this is my email. Obviously, put your own email when you logged in. It'll be your email. I get the email, I'll call you back. So, this is King West. Uh, let's pick on this unit. This is live. I haven't even looked at this or prepared this. I'm just showing you. So, here's your typical one bedroom. It's 15 days on the market. Um, unit 706. It's a cute little unit. It doesn't have much view. It's just your typical one bedroom unit. It's got an L shaped kitchen, what I like. Okay, so you may have to top it up a little bit. Maybe you'll get 2000 for it. Not the end of the world. But when you buy these units, dear investors, you've got to watch for a couple of things. The first thing you need to do is not buy in a place where tons of other investors bought. That's why I like the King West and the Queen West because at the end of the day, those more unique properties will get you. Know, this is a unique property. This is, this is an old building. Renovated. It's really nice. I mean, it's, you know... Now, obviously, it completed for a while. It may, it may need to be modernized, but the building itself is, is just a piece of history. And you're looking at 
this is in Bellwoods, by the way. This is Trinity. Bellwoods like the most lively place in the city. So when you buy property, buy quality. When you run and stand in line to buy all these units that everyone else is buying, that's what's going to happen. Okay, you're not going to get, here's 1,900 units at City Place. And, you know, if I'm going to offer 18 or 17, they're probably going to say yes. Okay, that's a nice unit. It's got a little home office. It's all good. I don't like the kitchen. Don't buy these units with the kitchen. I'm just don't buy these units. There's so many of them. They're very difficult because you're sitting in your kitchen and you don't have a proper living space. Um, and any of these units you buy in like, like, a, like a high investor building, you know, even Liberty Village, this, they have to come up. Only in 10 days, they already brought the price by 10, by, by, uh, by uh, 100 bucks. And here's another one, Lynn Williams, 2150. Okay, now this is uh, DNA, DNA3. The price will be a little higher because it's got a King Street address and it's a, a bit of a nicer building, more modern building. So you have to buy the good buildings. In my opinion, it's better to buy in a medium-sized building or even the small buildings where you can get a better return because you have a unique value proposition that you can get. If you buy like a giant building, you're competing with so many other investors, not only in that same building, but also all around you, okay? So City Place, you're going to buy cheap, but you're going to sell cheap, and you're not going to get the best renters because you're basically getting the weaker people. If you want to get... So I would still buy I would still buy Tridel the Well. I would still buy... And actually, maybe more than ever, I will focus on quality, okay? 125 down. If you want to be at Young and King, there you go. Okay, on and on and on. But if you have a unique property and you're right in Austin and it's brand new, you can ask to charge more and that's okay. Now, I don't know if you'll get that amount. It's a larger unit. Maybe it's got parking. It's only 11 days of the market. But, you know, there's just so many units in this building available. And if you want to live in that area, then you got to pay for it. And what it does, it's really creating a situation where we can clearly see areas in town where the Lots and lots of residential uh, condos, even if you want to be by the water. You know, prices are coming down. Lots of these prices are coming down. Those green areas should be red, in my opinion, because the price is down and up if the price went up. But it's all good. And you can see here. And they're going to sit on the market 102 days. Obviously, $5,500 a month, you know, that's that. not everyone wants to rent that. Your average tenant want to pay 2000 a month, give or take $200, okay? So... You know, even here, 52 days on the market, and if this unit is vacant, and you're just like sitting on a vacant unit, you're losing $2,000 every month. You might as well just reduce and start getting some cash flows in, because after, you know, two or three or four months of unit vacant, it doesn't make any sense. But look, they didn't buy the best unit. This is, and the presentation is not that great, and this unit is not that great. So when you buy units you have to buy and this investors my friends you have to buy good quality units you have to buy good plans and you have to buy unique product okay if you are buying just run in the mill and run in the mill means just like generic stuff Gen you know like here's unit. it's a nice unit but again that awful kitchen that runs the side of the unit i can't stand them and then you're looking into another neighbor and they're looking into you so it's dark so, you know, maybe a few months ago, but now the, you pay a little more. But look, there's no light. It's kind of it's kind of depressing. Yes, the area is amazing, King and Bathurst, but it's problematic, okay? So the tenant will go, well, maybe I can do better. Maybe I can do better. I mean, there's so many units on the market. Look, I'm just going to zoom in. Let's see if it knows King West. King West Street, King West Village. Let's try King West Street. Okay, so there's 18 here. And as I move out, I'm going to start to see more and more units. Okay, so there you go. More and more units. And I'm going to zoom out a bit. And you're going to see the number of units jump. So there's 401 units available here. So anyone that wants to live in this area, okay, right here, I'm basically between Spadina and Ossington or so, has 462 options already. And if I don't want to be, I want to be north of the tracks, 284 options. That's pretty good. Do you think I can find a cheap unit here? Of course I can. Do you think I find a good deal here? Of course I can. So landlords, you got to have your units spick and span. You got to be clean. You got to be good. You got to buy the good units. Tenants, you can negotiate these days. Okay, you can negotiate these days. And that's really good news. Okay, so a lot of people talk about housing crisis. 
but you know it's it's going to even itself out of course as the city adds more people um, we need more beds but right now we're in a situation where you can actually have a choice which is really nice it's the first time in many many years that i've seen this and i i think i think this will continue this person reduced by 300 dollars. so let's see what they got here this is 250 wellington it's an older building so maybe it was uh you know unrealistic expectations maybe it was uh it was furnished that's that's okay not my style all the building i think lower floors lower ceiling too there's nothing wrong with it and at 2100 it may make sense okay but it's already reduced 300 so this was 2400 so set your expectations right uh, make sure your product is phenomenal and if you're if you're tenants you can negotiate these days you can find some great deals and you have options so that's all for today what's going on with the rentals lots of rentals in the market investors you gotta buy better units you gotta make better buying decisions talk to me before you buy a lot of people buy just because everyone else does, but that's not the right thing to do anymore. You really have to buy quality, and you have to buy good floor plans, and you got to try to avoid these generic buildings with like 90% investors and go to the unique buildings. Even if they cost a little more today, I think in the long run, you're going to thank me, okay? I was, I was always the one, I was always the one, <laughs> $1,000 less at the Shangri-La, $1,000 less. They dropped the price by $1,000. Okay, it may not be typical, but it's still there on the market. What do you got here? Okay, so hey, you maybe you offer three thousand, maybe they'll take it. Who knows? Okay, <laughs> one bed, one bath. These are nice units. I've been in them, but that's still a lot uh, for a vacant unit. That's like five or six bucks a foot. So you, ha you have options, my friends. you got to be realistic investors. And the best thing to do is before you buy or sell, give me a call. Yossi Kaplan, search Realty, search Mortgage. I'll help you out. Thank you very much. Have an amazing day. That's it.